Alrighty guys, we are a little late here and that is because I was debating on doing a wrap up or not since I did already talk about a good deal of these books in reading vlogs this month, but you guys said you wanted to see it, so here we are. So we are going to be talking about all of my March reads. Like I said, all of these books except for two were in reading vlogs. So I will not be going fully in depth into my thoughts, feelings, opinions. I will be telling you some of them, but not nearly as much as what was in the reading vlog. So if you are interested in any of these books that were in the reading vlogs, definitely head on over to those reading vlogs to get my full in-depth review of them. But I am excited to share what I read with you guys this month. I read 14 books total and I had a good time. I did have two, yes, two five-star reads. So again, I'm excited to talk about them and let's jump on in. So the first volume that I jumped into was Spy Family Volume 1 and I can see why everyone loves the Spy Family. This series is so well loved in the manga community and I can see why. I have to say this is my favorite manga that I've read so far. In this one we meet three main characters and it's just an absolute blast. It's action-packed. There's not a dull moment in this and I feel like a lot of manga feels really episodic and like there are clear points where it's like okay we've heard this already or we, like it gets repetitive and things like that and I get it because manga is released like week by week or bi-weekly or you know manga is released on a schedule so sometimes it can be a little repetitive just to remind the reader. This one I don't feel that way about this one at all and I love that. So in this one we meet our three main characters. We meet Twilight or Lloyd who is our spy and right from the start he gets a mission where he needs to essentially have a family so he needs to get married and have a child well he goes a roundabout way of doing so and it's just a, it's really fun to see so the first thing he ends up doing is adopting a child and her name is Anya and she is a telepath and I'm not really giving anything away because it's literally on the back here so Anya is a telepath so like she already knows what Lloyd is thinking and it's it's really funny to see not only is it action-packed but there's a humor to this too and I really enjoyed that as well and obviously he has the child so now he needs a wife and he meets Thor and it's just it's a lot of fun Thor is an assassin which you learn in here as well and it's just it's really cool uncovering things about the characters and I like I said you just never get bored and I absolutely love that about this and I cannot wait to continue on with the series. I'm actually waiting until I get literally every volume that's out of this series to continue on because I know I'm going to want to binge read it because I remember feeling at the end of this like I just wanted to keep going with the series and that was not the point of the vlog. So there is Spy Family Volume 1. I gave this one five stars and I cannot wait to continue reading this series. Then I read What's Wrong with Secretary Kim. A lot of these manga I got from the library. So that was one I got from the library. I will put a picture of it over here. And I had a good time reading this, but I can't say it was one that really stuck out to me. So in this one, we have a man who is very business oriented. And then you have his secretary who is Secretary Kim. Now, Secretary Kim essentially does her job so well and her and her boss get along so so well. It's not even that they necessarily get along so so well but they work with each other extremely well and her boss is just this person that not many people get along with that well or like can work with well. So eventually here Secretary Kim is like you know I'm going to be leaving I just wanted to let you know and gives to her two weeks. But the boss is like, I can't let you leave. Like, you can't leave. Like, you know, we work so well together. And he's essentially doing everything he possibly can to try to make her stay. And it's cute. It's quirky. I had a good time. But it's not one that really sticks out in my head. And... I can see myself picking it up in the future, but I don't think I will be purchasing it. I will most likely just get it from the library. I ended up giving it three stars. It was just kind of average for me. So that is where that one landed. And then the next one that I got from the library as well was Kaiju number eight. These are all again volume ones. And I have to say this is another one that I absolutely loved. So 
for me, I didn't think like action-packed manga was going to be something I really enjoyed. But as you could tell, with Spy Family, I love that. Kaiju number eight, I love that. So I feel like action-packed manga is kind of like what I love in manga. But anyway, with Kaiju number eight, again, action-packed. There was never a dull moment. It was quirky in its own way. It was fun. It was it was just so enjoyable. So in this one we get introduced to our main characters and the male main character in this one he is actually a part of the cleanup crew essentially for when the defense force takes down a kaiju they go in and you know clean up the kaiju so the town can get back to normal and everything like that so we see him working and then we get more of his backstory and his backstory is he always wanted to be in the defense force he always wanted to be one of those people taking down the kaiju and instead of doing that obviously now his reality is like cleaning up the kaiju when the defense force is done taking them down so he's like you know evaluating his life and like feels like he's not doing very much and you know had all these dreams and ambitions and you get to see that with those dreams and ambitions of being in a defense force he also had a childhood best friend and she actually is part of the defense force and she's like the major person in the defense force so he's like you know she went on without me and i promised her i would essentially be there with her you know taking down these kaiju like it was a dream of their childhood to do this together and obviously she is there he is not and he has tried out before to be part of the defense force and just hasn't made it but now he is trying out again to be part of the defense force and there is a major twist in this volume and it's just a lot of fun again action-packed i really enjoyed it i cannot wait to continue on with the series that one was a 4.75 star for me so another amazing read then we move on to our next one which is last game volume one and this one I was expecting more from it because I feel like I've heard a lot of people talking about this one and ultimately this one is about our two main characters on the front here. We have our male main character and his dad owns like a resort company. His dad owns multiple resorts and he is like the best at everything at school like there's not anything that he's not the best at at school and in comes our female main character and she comes into the school and she ends up being better than him at everything and uh, this one fell flat for me because it's supposed to be like a rival story but he looks at her as his rival but she doesn't necessarily look at him like he's her rival if that makes sense so this kind of fell flat for me and what i really enjoyed about this one was this girl was so good at everything because she has a single mom and her mom is working extremely hard and she's working extremely hard to try to give back to her mom and like wants to do better for her family and things of that nature whereas he's just kind of like this rude like kind of like arrogant character and I just felt like it really fell flat for me and it just was not a hit for me. I ended up giving this two stars and I will be unhauling this volume because there's no need for me to hold on to this when I didn't enjoy it and someone else out there could love it. So two stars for that one. Now the next one we have is 15 minutes before we really date. With this one we have our two main characters who had been friends since childhood and they are such good friends that people just kind of think that they're dating. So one day they say, you know, why don't we just give this a try? And I really liked aspects of this. So was this a total hit for me? No. But I loved seeing their dynamic and trying to figure out how, since they've been friends for so long, how to not make it awkward while they're trying to be in a relationship together. And I thought it was really cute. I thought it was really sweet. But there's nothing in this that really stuck out to me. And again, this is just the first volume. So that is kind of why I'm debating on continuing it or not. Because like I said, there wasn't anything that stuck out. But it was really sweet, really cute. So I don't know if I'm going to pick this one up or not. I may try the second volume from the library and then kind of try to get a better feel for the series. So that is what I thought about that one. Again, really cute to see how they're trying to navigate this and try to take their relationship to the next level. I ended up giving this one a three stars. It was just average again. Maybe I will, maybe I won't continue. I am honestly up in the air about this one. But like I said, if I do continue, I will probably try to grab it from the library just to see how it continues on. And then the next one I ended up picking up was Yak is the Lover. 
And if you've seen my recent haul, you will know I am continuing this series. Now I feel like people either really like or really don't like this. And I didn't have a problem with this. I can see why some people, you know, do have a problem with it. It's kind of controversial in the age gap area. So anyway, getting into this, we have our two main characters here. We have our male main character who is one of the head people in the Yakuza. And then we have our female character who is a college student. We see very early on that our female character is put in a situation where she can't seem to get herself out of. Normally she's really good at getting herself out of bad situations and can hold her own and you know fight and things like that. But in this situation she has a hard time getting out of. Well our main male character being one of the head of the Yakuza, he comes in and saves her and they end up having this little romance going on. I do have to say even just this first volume it's absurd it's ridiculous it's but it's fun you know what I mean like a book can be like absolutely ridiculous but fun at the same time so like I said they have their little romance it's a fun time I did have a really good time reading it I can see why people don't like this one but I do have to say I feel like manga in general is very quirky and a good deal of it is a bit ridiculous and I feel like that's kind of what makes a story you have to kind of find what hits for you and what doesn't because I feel like there are very like different tastes in manga but while this one was a little ridiculous I did have a really good time reading it and I look forward to continuing the series I did pick up the next two volumes and I know I did say this is a little absurd and ridiculous but I did want to say that the mangaka also says that this is absurd and ridiculous so I did want to put that out there just to throw it out there and let everyone know what they're jumping into when they jump into it but this one I do want to say was also plastic wrapped so there is mature content so I did want to say that as well but anyway this one was a 3.5 stars and I look forward to continuing the series and just seeing where it goes. The next book I read was actually a manhua that I got from the library and that was called The Horizon. With this one, this was a very unique read. It is very dark and I keep going back and forth on if I want to continue the series or not. I have to say the artwork is just absolutely stunning and unique and you can feel all of the emotions through the artwork and I just think the artist did such an amazing job and you can see that when you're reading it because I did like a little flip through even in the reading vlog and you could see that there was barely any words on the pages you didn't need words you felt the story just from the art alone and I feel like that's really hard to do and it was a really just sad and impactful story and that is kind of why I gave it the rating I did but I don't know I didn't necessarily love the story if that makes sense but you do get a lot of emotion pulled out of you from the story so we follow our main characters and I do have to say they are young and you feel so many emotions from the characters so you start right off there is a mass killing and our main male character, like I said, he's young. He sees his mom who has been killed and he goes and just kind of like journeys on by himself trying to keep himself safe. So he sees this abandoned bus and goes on it to sleep and he wakes up and there is a girl there around the same age as him and then they journey on together and you continue to see the mass killings take place and... There's another really dark thing that happens in this book and that's kind of why I just like it gives just such dark vibes that I don't know if I want to continue on but like I said the artist's work is just absolutely phenomenal. I have not come across a book that puts so much emotion into the artwork and like I said just truly absolutely amazing but I ended up giving this three stars just because I didn't enjoy the story and I know you're not supposed to enjoy this sad story but it just I didn't feel connected I didn't feel like I wanted to continue on reading it was just that sad so that is why I ended up giving it the three star but as far as like creativity and uniqueness it's just it's top notch so there was kind of like my dilemma with rating it but I did end up giving it a three stars will I continue I don't know there are days where I'm like I really want to continue and there are other days where I'm like I cannot handle that so that is how I ended up feeling about that book then I went on to read the savior's book cafe in another world this one was another one of my favorites from this reading vlog and this was actually the last one I read for that reading vlog 
and I just had a grand old time reading this. This is an isekai, which means one of the characters gets transported to another world. So in this one, we have our female main character who's transported to another world as a magical savior. So she doesn't want to go, but she also gets to kind of create this life that she wants to live in this world. And it's really cool to see she creates this book cafe and she gets to kind of create everything and anything. She has a say in how things go and you know, how things run in her shop. And it, it's really cute. I really, really love this. If you're looking for a cozy fantasy manga, I would definitely pick this one up. This one also has a romance in it. And I just really, really love this. This is a great start to the series. And I also have volumes two and three on my shelves so that I cannot wait to jump into. I'm going to wait to read the entire series until I pick up volumes four and five. This is only a five volume series so if you are someone who is hesitant to jump into manga because there are so many volumes per series this may be one you want to jump into. Like I said if you love cozy fantasy romance because it is only five volumes and I do have to say I love this so highly recommend this one. I ended up giving this one 4.75. I was going back and forth between 4.75 and 5 but if I have to go back and forth between the two I am giving it a 4.75 so that is what I thought about that one. Again really fun, really cozy and just a really good time. Okay so from there the rest of the books are novels. So the first two novels I read in March were not in any reading vlog so these were the only two books that were not in reading vlogs. The first one that I read was Murder Most Owl and this is by Sarah Fox. I did read this as an arc on my Kindle and I have to say I love Sarah Fox's writing. I think her cozy mysteries are a blast. I always just have a great time reading them. So we have our main character. Her name is Georgie and she is a screenwriter and she has this big life and she had these grand dreams and you know she's a screenwriter and has a busy lifestyle but she goes to visit her aunt. Her aunt's name is Olivia and she lives on a farm that has turned into an animal sanctuary. So that is located in Twilight Cove. So while Georgie's in Twilight Cove, she's helping out her aunt because her aunt is no longer able to really help on the farm nearly as much because she is injured. And on her aunt's farm, there's also a new farmhand and he is a good looking gentleman and you get to know more of his background through the story. I don't wanna to give too much away here. So one day Georgie ends up going into the woods and she stumbles upon a woman named Dorothy. Now Dorothy has two dogs and then has this owl that is always around her as well. A lot of people claim that she is a witch, but Georgie and Dorothy kind of hit it off in like a friendly way. You get to see their relationship kind of start to develop and them kind of start to make friends. And although this is a very short, sweet encounter, there is a mystery to be solved. There was a death that took place. Again, I don't like telling you guys who ends up being the victim because I know a lot of people don't like reading the synopsis of Cozy Mysteries because it kind of gives away who the victim is and like, you know, that whole deal. So I don't want to say too much about it. What I do want to say is... I love this. I love the little magical elements. I love the little paranormal elements. I thought it was done so well. It was done like so discreetly and there wasn't too much of it. It was like just the perfect amount and I just loved all the stuff going on here. I just had such a fun time reading this book. I ended up giving this four stars. I thought it was a really good time and again I just have a really good time with Sarah Fox's books in general. So four stars for that one and then the next one I ended up picking up this one, uh, I loved it. It was My Lucky Charm by Courtney Walsh. This is the second book in a Holidays with Heart romance. And I have to say, I just love this series. Courtney Walsh's writing it just hits. I, like I said, with when I read My Phony Valentine, which is the first book in this series, her rom-coms are actually funny. Like I feel like rom-coms, sometimes the comedy doesn't hit that much. Whereas with these ones, they just do. And I had an absolutely amazing time. And with this one being a Holidays with Heart romance, we do follow the Heart sisters in this series. In this book specifically, we follow Eloise. And Eloise is the sister that is happy-go-lucky. She just has the best personality. And she is the type of person, when she's in a relationship, she gives it her everything. She just puts her all into the relationship and it ends up kind of backfiring in all of her past relationships and she just kind of gets burned in every single relationship she was previously in. In this one though we follow Eloise and Gray 
And right off the start here, we have Courtney Walsh again just starting off this book so strong with Eloise being at a New Year's Eve party. And she is the only one in her friends group who is single and does not have someone to kiss when the clock strikes 12. And on top of that, her ex actually walks into where they are celebrating and it just gets a little awkward. So her friend comes up to her and was like, you know, Eloise, you are the only one here that's single and I know you want to kiss someone when it strikes midnight and why don't you find someone to kiss essentially? And she's like, I'm not like that. I'm not a person who does that kind of thing. But she ends up, you know, kissing this stranger and she's having an internal battle because she's like, this is so awkward. I don't do this type of thing. And, you know, it's just a really fun time. I had a great time with this. In the previous book, we follow Eloise's sister Poppy and a guy named Dallas who is on this hockey team. And in this, we have our main male character who is Grayson. They call him Gray. And Eloise essentially ends up working for the hockey team to help one of the players out who ends up being Grayson. And it's just a great time. Let me read the back for you because I feel like I am not doing this book justice with the synopsis that I'm giving it. It says, a humiliating breakup leads to an impulsive New Year's kiss with a complete stranger. What could possibly go wrong? It's no secret that I love life and Dr. Pepper, but also I love a challenge. So when the coach of the Chicago Comets gives me the opportunity to help their star player, newly traded to their team, acclimate to the life in Chicago, I'm all in. I have to be. After my last job went up in flames, I have something to prove. It turns out that player, Grayson Hawk, is the rudest, most off-putting, reclusive guy I've ever met. It also turns out that he is the beautiful stranger I kissed on New Year's Eve. I can do this job. I can do this job. I can do this job. And I can really well. I can make Gray's life easier, show him all the reasons to fall in love with this city, and in the process, hopefully completely forget that amazing kiss ever happened. How hard can it be? We're total opposites anyway. I love people and all their stories. Gray loves hockey and nothing else. I love to talk. Gray only stares. I'm happy-go-lucky. Gray's all work and no play. There's just one problem. The more I spend time with Grayson Hawk, the more I start to see that underneath his bristly, standoffish exterior, he's nothing like the man everyone thinks he is. And suddenly, all the reasons for keeping my distance, staying professional, and not falling for someone again are impossible to remember. I just absolutely adored this and I feel like I cannot say enough good things about Courtney Walsh's writing. This one was a five star for me, just like My Phony Valentine. I do want to say I know these have a subplot of, you know, like holidays, like Valentine's Day, St. Patty's Day. You will not feel weird reading these during any time of the year. If you want to pick up My Phony Valentine and start reading the series, you will not feel out of place reading this when it's not Valentine's Day or when it's not St. Patty's Day. Pick these books up. They are so good. I promise you're going to love them. If you love the sound of it, you're going to love it. Pick the series up. I cannot say enough good things about the series. So anyway, that was My Lucky Charm. And the last of the books that was not included in a reading vlog this month. Now jumping into the cozy mysteries I read. I also had a reading vlog for these books. And again, I will link that down below. So with these ones, I started off with an author that I already know. Her name is Tanya Kappas, and I read Scene of the Grind. This is part of the Killer Coffee Cozy Mystery series, and I have to say that I did read just a little bit on the Kindle, but I consumed most of this book from the audiobook version, so I absolutely loved the audiobook. I thought with this being like a southern book, the southern accent of the narrator, it just fits so perfectly. In this book, we have our main character, Roxy. Now, Roxy was a lawyer. She retired. She is still young, but she is also divorced. She moved out of where she was living to go back to a place that she knows quite well called Honey Springs. Honey Springs is a place where Roxy's aunt lives and Roxy used to visit her aunt there quite often and with Roxy moving back she is also following her dreams of opening a coffee house and this is called the Bean Hive. Now the Bean Hive is opening up on a newly renovated boardwalk so it's just like the perfect setting for a cozy mystery 
and it's just a great time like I said I don't want to say who the victim of this cozy mystery is but I do have to say that you see a lot of gossip going on but what I loved about this one was I thought the setting was really cool I also love the aspect of Roxy going back to a place she knows and kind of being familiar with the people and the stores and just like the town in general I really enjoyed that and while I loved all of that I felt like the major thing well there's kind of two things so the major things that took away from my rating for this one was the fact that there is a romance subplot in here and the relationship just it was too fast the relationship building was way too fast it was it felt so rushed like way too rushed and that took a lot away from the book for me i feel like in cozy mysteries i love i love a good romance subplot and I love that it can continue in the books, but this one just, like I said, it was way too rushed, it was way too much, way too soon, and it was just, it took away from the book. And that was my one big complaint about this book. Another thing I wanted to say was, I felt this was very predictable from a certain point. Like, I remember very clearly in the beginning, I was like, I have no idea where this is going. And then there was a part in the book where it's like, I know who did it. I know exactly who did this. And there's like no questions asked about who did it. And I was right. So from that point on, it was just like kind of, you know, going through the motions of like figuring out who it was when I already knew. And that was just something I didn't really enjoy. I did also want to say that I consumed, like I said, the majority of this through audiobook. A lot of the reviews I was looking at said that there were a lot of grammatical errors and like not the best of word choices throughout the book. So I did want to mention that as well. If you're reading this on Kindle and you're like, Laura, what are you talking about? You loved this book and you didn't mention anything about like the errors. I did want to throw that out there because it is mentioned a lot in the reviews. So if you're looking to, you know, read this book, maybe try the audiobook because like I said, I did love the audiobook. I ended up giving this book a 3.5 stars just because of the rushed relationship development and the predictability when you got to a certain point in the book. So that is why I ended up giving that one 3.5 stars. Now the next book I picked up for this reading vlog was The Great Witch's Baking Show by Nancy Warren. In this one we have our main character Poppy and as far as a little bit of background about Poppy before we get into anything else, Poppy was left on a baker's doorstep when she was an infant. Now the baker obviously contacted you know officials and police to try to locate Poppy's family but no one was located so Poppy was adopted but she still kept in contact with the family that she was left on the doorstep of so there's just a little tidbit about Poppy's background. What I want to say about this book is I love that in here we get a little introduction right off the start here and I absolutely adored that. And it starts off with a baker with secrets, which is in trouble, the cameras are rolling, on your marks get set, die. Now with the introduction, you kind of get a little bit about like what's going to go on in here and just like a general premise for the book and series in general. But then you move on and you have a prologue. And I absolutely adored how this book was set up. So in the prologue, we meet two of the judges. One is Elspeth Peach and one is Jonathan Pine. And both of these judges are witches and both of these judges are doing this competition for different reasons. And the witches council actually has an eye on these two judges for a specific reason. Jonathan is a witch who uses his magic for his own good and they are doing this as a punishment to him making him be a judge in this competition now as far as elspeth goes she is a witch who uses her magic to help out contestants from time to time and like if she sees something falling off someone's counter she'll like make sure they're there to pick it up and like you know just make sure little things don't happen to contestants when something bad is about to happen and she gets a little warning from jonathan saying hey, you know, like, I am I know I'm here for punishment, but the council also has their eye on you because they know you are helping out the contestants, so just make sure you have that in check during this competition, essentially. So anyway, this competition is taking place. We got to meet our, you know, two judges, and then we jump into the story, and we get to meet Poppy and what's going on there. So there are 12 contestants during this competition, and Something that I felt a little off with in this book is I had to keep reminding myself who the contestants were and like running the names through my head to try to like kind of keep up with people. Now you don't meet all 12 contestants in this book, 
but you do meet some of the contestants you get to meet some of the production crew you obviously get to meet the judges and then there's like this little background story going on here of you know where this competition is taking place Poppy also kind of thinks something's going on with her biological family there because there's there's just this little backstory going on that I think is really super interesting so anyway there's just a lot of characters going on there's a lot of different dynamics going on and I had a really good time but I just had to keep thinking to myself okay here's this character's name who is this person again you know that type of deal what I loved about this was I thought the mystery was just absolutely phenomenal. When the mystery unfolds, I feel like it's the most unpredictable thing and the way it was revealed was just so well done and I just had a really fun time with this. I had a fun time also with the paranormal aspect of this and I think the relationship development in this is also really intriguing. I am very excited to continue on with this but I did end up giving this book four stars and then the last and final book that I ended up reading in March was Aloha Alibi by Jasmine Webb. This book from the start I knew this was going to be amazing. The reviews on Goodreads are so good about this book and I can say that this has been the best start to a cozy mystery series I have read yet. I feel like with series sometimes you know the first book is just kind of getting introduced to especially with cozy mysteries getting introduced to the characters getting to know their personalities getting to know the town they're in and just like relationship building scene building and all of that good stuff with this one I, it was just it was so good in this one we have our main character whose name is Charlotte now from the prologue you are hooked you are hooked immediately like I'm telling you within the first two paragraphs you're like I need to know more about what's going on so our main character Charlotte she lives in Seattle she works at a jewelry store and one day she notices a robber coming in and while this man took some time to do like some kind of covering up, he didn't cover up enough to not be able to figure out who he is. Charlotte knows who he is by looking at this man and she knows from this man's background he is going to leave no witnesses because he didn't take the time to fully cover himself up and if he were going to leave someone alive he would have taken the time so no one was able to recognize him. He is affiliated with a gang and you know she knows this is bad news from the start here. She is held at gunpoint and you see her thoughts being held at gunpoint and while it's such a serious situation you can already tell the humor that's going to be put in this book from her being held at gunpoint but anyway with this whole occurrence happening I don't want to give too much away but with this person being affiliated with the gang that comes into the jewelry shop with Charlotte being a witness she has to get out of Seattle because obviously the gang knows now you know Charlotte and you know with everything that went down she is now being targeted by this gang now I do have to say some aspects of this are not what would happen in real life. Like if you had something that was in connection to what was going on with them, you know, they wouldn't take it lightly and they would be like after you, after you, like they wouldn't just be, you know, leaving things or like threatening. I feel like they would take action. But with this one, Charlotte ends up moving from Seattle to Hawaii after something big takes place. and. Again, I don't want to go too in depth or into detail because while it's in the beginning of the book, I feel like it was just such a fun time reading everything that was going on and taking place and I don't want to spoil that fun reading experience for anyone. But anyway, Charlotte ends up traveling back to Hawaii where her mom lives and she is going to be staying with her mom. Her best friend ends up picking her up from the airport and her and her best friend have not seen each other for a long while. So you get to see that relationship rekindle and it's just such a good, I can't say it enough, it's such a good time. Charlotte goes back to her mom's house and she's like, I need a job because I need to move out of this house with my mom because her and her mom, you get to see the dynamic between her and her mom and it's, it's funny. I know people are going to be like, you know, it's kind of toxic and whatnot, but it's humorous as well. It's written to be funny. You can tell that in the book. But anyway, with Charlotte needing a job, she is looking around town for a job when she comes across the ice cream shop that she visited frequently when she was living in Hawaii. And she goes in and she just starts helping the owner. She sees the owner's store is filled with customers. The owner is busy trying to get everyone's orders ready. And she just goes in and she immediately starts helping. She doesn't ask any questions. And 
you know, she just says to the owner, like, I see you need help, I'm gonna help you. And the owner is like, you know what, if you can help me without making any mistakes, you're hired. Charlotte ends up helping, making no mistakes, gets hired to work at the ice cream shop. And in this one, I have to say, I was like, at first when the victim is presented and like the murder takes place, I was like, you know, how is Charlotte going to be involved? Like, how is Charlotte going to help in like the sleuthing and like, how like I don't know this the I like I don't know the murder when it takes place seems kind of disconnected but then you see there is a reward for anybody that knows anything about the murder or who can tell the police how you know the murder went down so she ends up trying to figure out how the murder took place who had done it and you know all of that good stuff and in her search for who had done the murder to get this reward she comes across two other older ladies who are also trying to figure out you know who had done this murder and you know trying to work out all the details and it's just such a good time like i said this was the best start to a cozy mystery series that i have ever read and i haven't read very many so you know it is what it is but i do have to say that the high rating of this on goodreads is for a reason it is good Good. it will keep you hooked but the one thing I do have to say is I wish there was more as far as like the mystery went I don't feel like the mystery was like a oh my goodness shock like the mystery in this one I felt like if the mystery in this one was as much of a shock as the mystery in this one was I feel like I would have given this five stars but I ended up giving this 4.5 stars. I will be continuing on with this series. This one, like the other two I have read for that reading vlog, are available on Kindle Unlimited. But I do have to say this cover is also absolutely stunning. I'm kind of obsessed with it. But if you look and you look at all of the covers for the series, they're absolutely stunning. So I may just have to purchase the physical copies of these ones, especially since I'm already loving this series. But anyway... 4.5 stars to wrap up my March reading. Those were all of the reads I read in March. Again, the grand majority of the books were in one of the two reading vlogs, which I will have linked down below. But thanks guys for sticking with me for this video. I do want to know, have you read any of these books and what were your thoughts on them? I also want to know what you read in March and what you thought of your own reads. So leave that all in the comments down below. Again, guys, thank you for sticking with me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this video, make sure to give it that thumbs up. And if you want to see more bookish related videos, make sure to stick around. I would absolutely love to have you. Thanks guys again, and I will see you guys soon. <music>